Hi, I'm Brie Allison with the National Library of Patient Rights and Advocacy, and welcome to our segment, Tell Us Your Story. Today, we are joined by Ms. Susan Mueller. Susan is the founder and CEO of Relief Mental Health, an outpatient provider that pro offers innovative mental health care. Relief Mental Health, which was founded in January of 2020, provides transcranial magnetic stimulation, psychedelics, psychiatry, medication management, and talk therapy for the treatment of depression, obsessive compulsive disorder, anxiety, and other diagnoses. The company has 10 locations expanding across Illinois, New Jersey, and Wisconsin, and is headquartered in Oak Brook, Illinois. Susan, welcome and thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. To start off, how did you begin working in the mental health field and what inspired you to open Relief Mental Health? I started working in the mental health field. Um, I've always been in healthcare of some sort and was very drawn to mental health just because it felt like I was able to help people. And there were so many instances when I was working in just healthcare um, where there were there were opportunities to work with psychiatrists and therapists and and seeing the impact that that, that made on people was something that I wanted to continue to do. Um, when I opened Relief Mental Health, it was really about seeing what was out there and being able to provide accessibility for patients. I think that's one of the most difficult things about finding care in mental health. Um, you know, you have your typical patient that might call and they wait for a really long time to get somebody to call them back or to have a human connection um, and to have somebody give them answers. And I think that for us, for me particularly, it was about being able to provide this accessibility piece to patients that just didn't exist. Um, you know, I think that a lot of people want to say that, you know, it's it's an easy process, but I think anybody that's ever had to seek out mental health treatment, they know that it's impossible. Exactly. People can wait a long time to see somebody, like you said, and there's so many people out there that are struggling with their mental health that providing something as accessible as Relief Mental Health is like a perfect opportunity. Yeah. And so, I don't think that there was uh, a lack of sort of these innovative treatments. And, and I saw this opportunity to really be able to offer something different that wasn't just your basic throw a Band-Aid on it and we'll see you in a month. So it, it was exactly something different. And to go off of that, can you talk a little bit more about your um, treatment programs and what makes you guys so unique? Sure. Um, we opened the company in January of 2020, and we only did transcranial magnetic stimulation, which was, which is a treatment for mostly depression and OCD, and it could treat all kinds of things, but um, opened it basically just doing TMS, and it is a an FDA-approved treatment that uh, is a procedure, um, so it's an, it's a very um, benign treatment in terms of side effects. It doesn't have systemic side effects and it's a way to treat depression and anxiety and OCD and other things without having to put more medications on people. Um, it requires people to have tried some medication and fail. Um, it's done in our office. It's a 20 minute treatment that we do over a series of six weeks and we see miracles happen with it. It's the absolute heart and soul of our company. And that's what we started with, but um, there is always a need for other things too, right? So, you know, as people were getting better and as we were seeing things happen um, with TMS, we found that there was a need for other things as well. So we we started offering this intranasal escatamine called Spravato, which is a treatment that was really inaccessible. And we found that patients also needed to have this treatment. We couldn't get them in anywhere. So we started doing Spravato out of a need for our patients and it is um, pretty miraculous, actually. Uh, it, it is an intranasal nose spray that we do in our office. Patients stay in our office for two hours. They come twice a week to start, and we taper them down to once a week, and hope, hopefully they, they stop coming at some point. Um, but it treats treatment-resistant depression, and it's this beautiful treatment that we've seen, again, we've seen miracles happen with it. I mean, I've personally experienced it with family members that have gotten better with it. And, and I could probably talk for hours about that, but, you know, we don't have hours. So um, so we started doing Spravato next. And then, you know, we also found a need to um, 
provide medication management. We have a whole robust team that that will write medications for patients. Um, and we also provide therapy. So we do provide your traditional treatment options, but we really are focused on these non-traditional ways to treat patients uh, with TMS and Spravato. And then most recently, we started doing IV ketamine. Um, it is an off-label treatment for depression and other mental health issues. Um, it is, we've seen some really good results with it so far. We just started doing it a few, a uh, couple of months ago. It's only offered in one of our offices right now, but we plan to expand that throughout all 10 offices at some point. That's crazy. I feel like I've never heard of any of those different treatment programs, but they seem to be doing great work for people. Yeah, they really are. And and that's part of the issue too, right? I mean, just getting the word out that these things are available is so important to us because we could be helping so many more people. Mm -hmm. So can you talk a little bit more about TMS and kind of just talk about like how the process works? Sure, absolutely. Um, so what the, what TMS is, it, 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 it's, um, it's a neuromodulation technique. So it's, it's, it's repairing and restoring the neural pathways in the brain that are, um, that have some sort of abnormality to them. Um, it's stimulating and destimulating parts of the brain um, to, to regulate it. So it works a lot like medication, but it is a more durable way um, to, to be treated. And the process with us is, um, you know, our psychiatrist will do an evaluation. Um, they do something called a, a motor threshold mapping to figure out what the TMS prescription is. Um, and that mm -hmm. means, you know, how intense is the machine going to be turned and exactly where in the brain do we need to focus on in order to give them the right treatment. Um, so depending on what their diagnosis is, we're going to do um, a treatment in a particular part of the brain. And, um, you know, they come and they sit for 20 minutes a day, five days a week and have a really nice conversation. Sometimes we do some light, um, you know, therapeutic exercises while the patient is there. Um, but we, but our staff is amazing and they engage with people the whole time. And most of the time when people finish their round of treatment, they find it very daunting to come in and think about the fact that they have to come here every day for 36 treatments. But by the time they're done, they don't want to leave because they love their their treater so much. I mean, these people are amazing and and it really, they, they want to see everybody get better. Um, and we have some great, great clinicians that um, are looking at, you know, how can we make adjustments in the treatment um, to make sure that everybody gets a successful treatment here. And that's great that you have both the technological side that's working with their brain, but also still like talk therapy at the same time working together. Yeah. And have you seen a difference in the mental health field since the pandemic? And if so, can you expand upon some of those differences? Sure. Um, yeah, I would say we've seen a huge uptick in the need for mental health treatment um, I think for uh, for me personally, I've seen it probably affecting our older population and our younger emerging adults the most. Um, the emerging adults really got they they really had a a difficult time in understanding. You know, a lot of people missed high school or parts of high school or parts of college or all of college. Um, you know, they experienced all of these new things and different opportunities to sort of soft launch them into adulthood during those really important times of their lives. And then they were told sort of, you know, don't do any things. You're going to stay at home. They miss out on these opportunities to really, you know, get in and learn. And I think that so much of what's happened is this sort of grouping of maybe Probably now it's like the 16 to 25 year old population at this point that are really struggling. And because of that, there's this sort of uncertainty that they've been they've been experiencing. And, you know, they have anxi increased anxiety. They have increased depression. Um, they, they had a lot of things that they didn't get to do, um, you know, silly things, just like homecoming or going to a football game or, you know, going and living in the dorms their freshman year of college. There's just so many things that got taken away that caused this like very big uncertainty. And I think that, you know, we've really seen a big difference in 
that population being affected. And I, I would say that a, a very good portion of our patients are 16 to 25. Um, and then even the the older generation, you know, that retired population, they they were in such isolated situations where they 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 didn't get to have human interaction and and there became people that never experienced depression in their lives that were experiencing it for the first time and didn't have people around them to talk through it or talk about it. Um, and many times for those people, we were the only place that they got to go during the pandemic. And we had to support a lot of people that otherwise had nowhere to go and no one to turn to. So I'm really proud of what we did during that time and, and what we continue to do um, in helping people that were really highly affected by the pandemic. Definitely creating that relationship with these people probably helped them get through the pandemic altogether. And it's interesting because I, I feel like the younger population we hear a lot about struggling with mental health for those reasons that you talked about, but it never occurred to me about the older generation. I feel like people don't really talk about that. So that's a very interesting perspective. Yeah. And so how do you think that we can overcome the mental health stigma and its perception as an invisible disability? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I think that things like you, what you're doing right now, right? Talking about it and making sure that people have access to understand that it's okay and talk. All we can do is talk about it more and more and more and, and destigmatize it and let people understand that, you know, if you had diabetes, you're going to treat that. Um, just like with mental health, you have to treat your mental health with just as much vigor as you would treat any sort of physical disability or, or physical issue. There are so many opportunities for us to get out and engage with people and talk about it. And, and I think people sharing their stories is such a huge part of destigmatizing mental health, destigmatizing getting help. There's so many different different groups of people that that maybe haven't been able to talk about mental health but getting people involved and and just being out there and and with so even with social media i mean i think that social media is one of those things that you know gets a really bad rap but it can also give people a lot of hope that other people are like them i i was watching a tiktok last night and there was a comedian who was talking about his ocd and i thought this is so amazing right it's 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 an older guy i think he was in his 50s or 60s and 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 in that generation like that's not something that they talk about a lot and it's really cool to see people talk about these things and 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 what celebrities are doing and everybody needs to talk about their mental health and that's the only way to destigmatize it and just normalize. Everybody's got something that they have, they need help with. Mm -hmm. Like you said, creating that connection allows people to feel like they're not alone and that's a better way to open up and just can lead to other conversations. Yeah. So I a hundred percent agree with you. And what do you recommend people do if they are worried about their mental health and aren't really sure where to start? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a ton of resources. Uh, there's a ton of free resources. They can go online and look at NAMI. They can, there's suicide hotlines. There's all kinds of ways that, that they can connect with people. But I, I think that it's important for them to remember that making that phone call, maybe talking to a friend and, and making that phone call to any sort of mental health practitioner, even if they don't know where to start, you know, start with therapy, start with medication. And, and hopefully, you know, the mental health community can really join together to understand that if we can't necessarily help a patient, then give them a resource. Um, I really believe strongly that if anybody calls and we cannot help them before we get off the phone, there's always a resource given to them, whether it's hey, here's a website to look at. We can't be the right resource for you. However, maybe this could help you and you might be able to find what you need from that. It's it's really important that the whole mental health community comes together and, and understands that it's not just business, that the best business and, and the reason we're in this business is to help people. And so if you can't help them, give them something and give them some mm -hmm. hope and be empathetic. So I encourage people to just make the phone call and, and somebody on that other end of the line is going to help you. Exactly. Just take the chance and you never know where it can lead you. 
Exactly. And lastly, what is your favorite part about your job? My favorite part about my job is to just get to hear the stories, hear the stories of people getting better and helping people that didn't think that there was any hope at all and, and seeing them get better. I mean, that's the most rewarding thing. And there's, there's always going to be people that are really difficult cases, but those are the people that we want to see. You know, we want to hear their stories and I've heard, my gosh, I mean, I'll, I remember waking up on, on Christmas morning, this, this past Christmas and getting an email from a parent um, that she was so grateful for getting her son back. And I probably spent the entire morning in tears reading this email because it was just so impactful. This woman, you know, didn't have her son for, for several years and, and her whole family was affected by it. And she just sent an email saying, you know, thank you. This was the best Christmas gift that I could have gotten in getting my son back. And, and he's a kid again. And that's, in all the crazy days that we have, that's what makes it all worth it. I'm sure you come across so many different people from different walks of life and just watching them kind of come in with this mental health issue and kind of helping them through the other side. That has to be very inspiring work to do. It is. It really is. I don't think that there's I don't think that there's anything more impactful or or, or more rewarding than being able to to be part of that person's journey and to, to saving their life. And that's exactly. really cool. And that concludes our interview for today. Again, Susan, thank you so much for joining us and sharing your story. Relief Mental Health is a one of a kind facility and we appreciate you being so open and honest about mental health and different treatment options. Your work within the field is truly inspiring and making a difference. So thank you so much. Thank you so much, Bree. And please make sure to check out Relief Mental Health for more information. And if you or anyone you know is struggling with your mental health, please consider taking the first step and getting help. And if you're interested in sharing your story with us, please reach out with your name and email address to set up an interview. Email me at powerofpatient at gmail.com. I'm Brie Allison for the National Library of Patient Rights and Advocacy, and thank you so much for watching.